So you're the CEO and founder of Think, and please share with us what this is. And I'll, you know, after this, share my experience that I've had so far with it. Um, but what is Think, and uh, how is it helping people? So. Um, it's a non-invasive, um, almost organic um, way of training the brain for uh, peak performance or for healing. So how does it help people? It um, entrains you in a state of, so it's a very simple system, the way that it presents. It's not really a simple device because it took us uh, quite many years and quite many you know, trials and errors to really create it. It's been around for about 14, 15 years now. and um, what we did with it, we created it with Honeybee Robotics, and that's a company that creates devices for Mars and rovers. Very precise, I would say, device, uh, consisting of um, just a simple headset that you put on your head, you experienced it. Was it light? Yes, very much. And how long did it take to put it on? About 15 seconds. Yeah, so it was very easy. So as opposed to like a brain map that and brain cap that you have to put on and it takes about half an hour to glue it on the head. Um, this doesn't need glue or anything. You can actually be mobile with it. And you open the laptop and you just plug it in and you watch the little, what appears to be like a video game. It's a very sweet little innocent looking video game. And it stimulates your retina and phobia and um, it creates in your eyes, in your brain, it creates a bath of dopamine, and uh, which then enables you to stay focused. And uh, it's really proven. So we have an article that came out that it's just been accepted. Nature, um, Nature Scientific Reports. It's really um, we tested it amply, and it's been reviewed by probably 60 professionals, 60 scientists, and um, <clears throat> it's proven to increase your focus takes away ADHD completely, PTSD, people who have had concussions like uh, on hockey teams or on, on NFL um, teams, they, they trained with us and they recouped their brain capacity and sharpness literally within an hour. And of course, we don't just work with stars, we work with you know students and children and um, anybody who needs it. And that really is helpful, very helpful. It increases IQ, um, it um, increases the working memory, long-term memory. Um, so it's implied in, you know, it's, it's better as the brain and brain cognitive function and the body function in many respects. So we've seen also success with people who have motricity issues like Parkinson or um, MS or even just, you know, post-concussion motricity issues with people are in wheelchair after about a session of an hour, they can actually move. So that's part of it, what we do. It's so amazing. And, you know, you've shown me some things of um, just different aspects of this and what it's done to people before and after, you know, with, with videos and, and testimonies. And, you know, it speaks for itself. I mean, it's really quite amazing. And um, I'll share my experience here briefly, but one quick question. So how does this relate then to neuroplasticity and neurogenesis? So we have the data that it, it really changes the neuroplasticity because we have brain maps, uh, we have fMRIs, and, um, and we also have the um, cumulative frequencies that have accumulated over the training, so one hour or several hours. And we have data over, I think, 14 weeks of training uh, with about 46 people. They were all ADHD children, age 6 to 18. We also have other data from 108 people who have had concussion. And as I collaborate, we collaborate with various universities or hospitals. We get the data from them as well, from you know their their maps, so they're vetted uh, individually, you know, independently. Um, so we it benefits tremendously, and neuroplasticity happens because we can. So we know that it is happening because not only can we measure it on behavioral tests such as Connors or, or um, you know, DCAFs, Dallas Kaplan tests, they're standardized tests that have been around for many years. And we have tested them with other people, not with our uh, team, but with teams that are independent and 
so it's objective. Um, so that's one thing that you see it on objectively on, on the behavioral test, but also you can see it on um, the brain map, on the brain, you know, just literally when fMRI data came in, we had them analyzed blindly by five different groups from, you know, Columbia, NYU Langone, um, Sloan Kettering, um, University of Barcelona and University of Paris. So there are five different groups that looked at these same data blindly and um, they all gave us back the same maps. So it's reliable. So it wasn't, you know, it was vetted many times. That's truly incredible. And that's something that, you know, when I was reading about this and first learning about it, you know, a lot of people who are listening right now, they know that there's so many devices and gadgets and yeah. biohacks and, you know, different things that you can do and technologies. And of course, many of them are, are great and wonderful and they help people. Um, but I can truly say that when I came across this, it just completely stood out to me because it checked all those boxes of, you know, you're working with universities, with scientists, you're doing, you know, the, the real studies of really investigating this and making sure that this is done the right way to not only carry it out, carry out the study, but that there's no, um, you know, just things going on that can happen in the scientific community when studies and money and technology gets involved. And, you know, I've now had three sessions myself and, um, how did that feel? <laughs> um, amazing, truly, truly amazing. It definitely is like a brain workout, unlike anything else I've felt. So, I kind of compare it to, um, I just feel like my brain is flexing in a really strong way. Afterwards, you can feel that you've gone through a strenuous workout. Mm -hmm. And then of course, you know, resting and recovering and repairing. And now, you know, just a couple days into this, I can absolutely feel that I'm happier. Um, I feel um, that my voice is more, uh, that my voice is actually deeper. I feel also that, um, I have more fluidity in my voice and that yeah. I'm not stumbling on my words yes. as much as I used to. Um, and just, just happier and a stronger cognition and a stronger focus. So, um, I wouldn't say I've ever really had ADD or ADHD or, you know, um, I don't really necessarily believe in those diagnoses, but um, you know, tension is such a crucial thing for people. And with so many things out there, the, the technology and so many distractions, we know that it's, it's become harder and harder to focus, but I can literally feel after just a few sessions that I'm much more lasered in and, you know, I'm excited to continue with this and see how far this goes. It's really beautiful. Very well, nicely said. Thank you. I'm so glad, happy that it's working for you. And I think more will come. You know, more will. It's it's really interesting for me to watch you describe that because you, as an athlete, almost professional level athlete, and uh, and also very smart individual, you you really kind of you can dive into your own inner world and self monitor really much more precisely than average person can. So this is very encouraging, and I'm so glad that you could actually even recognize the timbre of your voice. And uh, but it's, it's I think beneficial to a lot of people. Yeah, definitely. So, Dr. Lana, what is the um, what's the vision for for what's next or what is to come uh, beyond where things are at with Think right now? And um, what do you want to do with this uh, long term or or big vision? Well, we had those discussions before, I think our visions are over overlapping, which is really nice. Um, one thing is definitely, I think, uh, scaling it to the world level would be really important right now because um, the world needs it, you know? And so my, my dream would be to create, you know, I'm self-funding a lot of these things, or most of things, all of them. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, I would prefer to, to um, I would desire to have enough now we're selling some of the licenses and um, creating you know scholarships and um, ways of, of uh, investing back into the company so we can actually create um, the second generation that can be sold at a very reasonable price around the world and that some of these units and things can be purely donated and enabling people to you know, who suffer from PTSD or, 
or actually not past stress disorder, but it's present day stress disorder and it's present trauma right now. We're all undergoing a lot of things. So I think that would be really wonderful and important. Doing some research, like what we were talking about, you know, combining it with various points, uh, maybe even DHA and um, um, other capacities, other things that we can study and, and investigate and see how it affects the brain, how it affects the performance in general. And um, also fun things with it. For example, I'm creating new centers now for um, entertainment, and that's going to be fun with frequencies of sounds that are analog, uh, with some really great performers, and um, you know different quality of performance and entertainment that is more meaningful. Um, it entices the connectivity between your own brain and yourself and your inner world, but also uh, with community at large and proximus, you know, really close community where you can walk in with your, you know, five friends and enjoy the beautiful, you know, performance or co-create various images on the screens and holograms via mind. You know, it's a different level of entertainment where you are the protagonist and where um, the world of entertainment is not um, abusing you or not using your data. You know, it's all about sovereignty and sovereign data, sovereign even sovereign, you know, crypto that we're embedding in our companies. <laughs> so things like that happen, I think, to be always all about enlightenment, all about ascension. Beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, one thing that I really loved when I was reading through the website initially is, and what you just kind of talked about, is the sovereignty of the human being and help having the technology help us you know and not have the technology run us or control us because there's a lot of people rightfully so who are skeptical about technology and applying it to the human body and uh, how it can you know influence physiology and and yeah. things like that so you know with this that's something that uh, again really stood out for me is that this is very symbiotic and uh, mutually beneficial for us living human beings to where we aren't going to be taken over by the technology. We are in full control of the technology. And, you know, it's really a, a collaborative relationship with it. And that's really the way that it should be. Yeah. Beautifully said. <laughs>